Hello, give me a second. I am setting this up. There we go. Nice. Okay. Oh, say. <laughs> Alright, uh, stream is set up now. Uh, see if it's saved. Now it's actually accurate. If we refresh, it's not for It's that. Okay. So, uh, let's go to scene. Uh, there we go. Uh, beautiful. And, uh, let's do this. So, what this video is gonna be. Alright, so this video is gonna be a commentary on this video I made. Um, I'm gonna talk about all the stuff, all the intricacies, all the world and stuff like that that I built. Uh, let me see, there we go. Nice, turn this down, and now I have live chat. Okay. So yeah, this is gonna be a commentary on this video. Uh, I'm gonna explain a lot of stuff. Let's start by getting into it. So. I would say that this shot, oh god, I should probably turn this a bit down. <laughs> so this is probably the this one shot over here. Honestly, probably the most impressive shot. It's not really intricate or pro it's uh, or complex or whatever, but I like it because it just looks so 3D. Like it's really cool. Right. See, so, yeah, get this. This dude's running. Uh, yeah. 16,000 solar. So, solar years, by the way, are 500 years. So, yeah. And, uh, by the way, just so I can be completely clear about this, the reason why I didn't include a lot of the details that I am talking about right now in the video is because if I included, say, one of these details, is two things that are gonna take. Because, one, it's gonna be a bit more boring. <laughs> And two, I'm gonna actually have to animate all that stuff. <laughs> and you know me. I'm not gonna animate, like, an extra five minutes just to explain some things that don't really matter too much to the story I'm trying to tell. Four years after the great outer solar expansion of 13... Yep, so 13,584 AD is the... Yeah, I mean, there's the I'm thinking that this would probably take place somewhere around the 20,000s. Uh, I'm assuming at least the birth of these two nations would be around the uh, 20,000s. Uh, I'd say the actual war probably takes place somewhere around 25,000 AD. Uh, the first, well, I don't know actually. I don't have this timeline mapped out, okay? Give me a break. Uh, yeah, so maybe around, like, the first wars probably broke out, broke out around, I'd say, a thousand years after these two nations were formed, and they just kept going, and I think the current, the current year would probably be 25,000, to be fair. So, yep, around 5,000 history, uh, the two nations, actually, no. Wait, no, I'm dumb. Okay. Sorry. No, no, this is... Um, so, 20,000 AD is when the two nations formed. And then, 3,000 years later, they had their first war. And then... And then, the wars just kept happening for another, like, 2,000 years, I'd say. So, yeah, 25,000 is when the current war is taking place. And the first war started out at 23,000, which I guess, yeah. Okay, there we go. That's good. Two nations formed in the Glass region. So there is going to be this part of the video where uh, I can actually pull up the script here. Oh, wait. That would not be a good idea. G give me a second. I, I need to pull up the script, but I don't want to spoil anything. So give me a second. Uh, sure. Capacraft. Okay. So, uh, let's pull up the script, because I, I'm currently using it. Alright, let's see, where's the, where's the, there you go, to be continued, enter a bunch, that way I don't accidentally do that, okay. There you go, nice. 
So this is the original script for the video. I think I deviated a bit from it in their voice acting. <laughs> but yeah. So the economy is busting, you go, Larson. So this, there was this meant to be this thing. Uh, originally, this piece of text uh, was gonna be the just saying like the Olars developed on this like a, a lot. Of, most of their planets were very calm and less stormy and could very open. And while the Lanars are in a very stormy world that is full of resources, so the whole idea of why these two nations separated uh, their economies is just because of their uh, their geography, basically. So the Olars, because most of their planets were open, were basically open testing, open fields, basically, and stuff like that. That was most of their planets. They developed around an industry of factory building, because, you know, it's pretty, it's really m more easier to build a factory in a really calm planet, stuff like that. Well, the Lanners over here, uh, developed in, oh, this is proof that I like my bomb video, eh, who cares, so, the Lanners developed in this very stormy world, but it had a lot of natural resources, so, you know, the Lanners spec more into mining, while the Olars spec more into factory building, because that's, you know, that's how they would develop with their terrain. Yeah, I don't understand this sequence. I mean, I guess the stormy world has a breathable atmosphere or something like that. I don't know, because this dude would be doing really bad if it didn't. <laughs> All right. Soon, trade. Yep, so these are the trade. Olar gives their manufactured goods, while Lanar gives their ore. They had a merge. So did their grievances. Oops, I think that they just selected the grievances. So they have different means of income slash resources. Yep, pretty much. That's that's how it goes. Then the Zeno showed up right between. So the th these uh this red thing that I'm hovering my mouse over is meant to be currency, by the way. Uh, bigger. So did their Greek. Yeah. So I I I can imagine that these two nations probably had a lot of reasons why they went to war. So first was probably the Zenos was the thing that kicked the can and really ignited the fire or whatever. I don't know why I said kicked the can, but uh. I can imagine, I can imagine that the Lanners also had uh, some other issues, like, I mean, like, uh, both sides, uh, while the Olars were a bit more conservative, the Lanners were more of a war nation, and they had to use their military on something, and also, uh, they thought that if they could take over Olar's world, then, uh, <laughs> okay, if they could take over Olar, then they could have both these massive factories in the same nation as an ore mining industry, which means that they would be able to make the big, uh, big uh, dollars and cents. Then the Zeno showed up yep. right between the two and posed a tariff on the nations. The Lanners realized that while the Olars could easily- This is also another part of it. Because the Olars had these, you know, manufacturing, they could use the things that they manufactured. That's pretty easy. But the Lanners couldn't- I mean, what are you supposed to do with some raw ore? They both did a war. They did. And, you know, this was a big deal because this war really benefited both sides. Like, you know. I get that the Lanners ask, asked the Olars too, but they were uh, the Olars would probably already have gone to war. So, you know. The, same resources as the, the Lanners just needed a bit more desperately. But it it pretty much benefited both it benefited both sides Albert a lot. Zeno was still for this is another form of early map. And by the way, just a little thing you might want to notice. I use the same base map for the entire video. Like, uh, look at this scene. This scene is uh, using the same map as this. It's just uh, an uncolored inversion. So if you, you might want to see if we can spot <laughs> all my laziness over here. Because I did bother to make like multiple maps. I just used the same uh, PNG. Give me a second. map yeah so I use I use the same PNG for everything I just put it in different places and stuff like that so that's the way you can be lazy force to retreat to an area above the two nations <laughs> Later, I mean you didn't notice it's cool I guess yeah was mad 
this was the final stage. And also, they couldn't attack him because they're. But now they're getting really up close to Olar, so yeah. Okay, two area above the they, final straw for them. Uh, so. They yeah. said to invade. So they said to invade the force. It did not end well for either side. So you see, we have this thing, which is fragments or There's whatever. a bunch of ships. It, you see that little thing that goes up? This is the same bullet that this turret fired. It just hit that thing, and it just hit their capital ship, the big brown one. Uh, yeah, the big brown capital ship. You see that one? This is the same one that was hit with this laser that just went up. They all exploded. And then they just both explode. And then they and then they just big boom created both after, sides after that. The resources, and the war was over already. They actually had wars, but it was going the same as the uh, first. They would, they stopped exporting to Zeno. Yep, so they would, uh, always in these wars, they would stop exporting to Zeno because what they know that the resources are just going to go over to the other side. So you're basically just trading with the side you're at war if, what, if you uh, export to Zeno. So they just kind of stopped doing that. and yeah, All the battleships would be destroyed. And because... They stopped exporting to Zeno. All their economies couldn't really function that well. So, you know, they they could only send out them in one big battleship. Yeah, just trading with extra steps, exactly. See, so yeah, um, and because this, when all their battleships got destroyed in the massive fight they did, then they just couldn't produce more. I mean, the Olars were eventually going to run out of all those ores they got from the Lanars, and the Lanars didn't have anybody who's taken their ores, so they would just, you know, but one war. their battleships would just all die, and that's pretty much it. One war was very different. Uh, so about the halfway point, this is all just world building, this is where we actually get into the war. The war started with an Ola planet. So you see, this is the this is the mo modern map. So here we have our two capitals, Olo in this star and Bolar in this star. So you see the Zenos. Um, I was gonna originally in the script. Shows the Xena are building a trading highway. I didn't end up actually doing that. I just showed this on the map. What is the in interstellar highway? So basically the Xenos, because they knew these two nations were like to trade with each other, they decided to profit off of it by building this massive interstellar highway and it would just zip you to the other side. Like I can imagine this travel was way faster so they would charge ships to go in, use this interstellar highway, which is way faster, and get to the other side. So this was um, really useful. So yeah, uh, this is Zeno's tr efforts with the trade. Will one five four. So I also originally I imagined that Zeno was going to be this big brother type of nation that just kind of. Uh, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, they built this interstellar hot. yeah, when, when they were not fighting, they could just use this big interstellar okay. highway. And then, pretty much, just use it. I don't know what you mean by before or after. They, they would use this, and then when the fighting started, usually, they would just stop exporting. You know. And yeah, so this is also, so the striking of Quill 154 got a ground deposit. Um... This is pretty crucial, because if you notice, Quill 154, pretty close to Lanar over there, and Lanar's whole economy is built on mining, so they're naturally going to want to go to war to take the mining planet. Relin was a rare material found underground. I also sound like a southerner at this part. Power for a lot of things, from efficient light to weapons. This is lights. And also weapons. <laughs> Lanar declared war. Yep, so they declared war. The implication that I was originally going for is you would see Lanar declare war. You would just see, like, oh, Quill's right there. Lanar's gonna declare war to get that. The massive battleship fight was over. And I'm just thinking, at this time, people were probably not 
you know, too scared of this war. I mean, like, they had had so many wars that this war was just another one. When the battleship fight was over, nope. people were still pretty calm. They're like, okay, war's over now. Who cares? Right. But, but then... was also different. But they found out that the lanterns... The intense music kicks in here, because the la Olars realize that the lanterns are still trading with them. Which means that they're still getting the money from the economy, which means they can still build many more battleships because they're getting money from the economy of Zeno and Olars. So the Olars naturally had to follow suit, which means now their economies were both fully functional while they were doing a massive war effort. Yeah. So, I mean, if the Olars want to actually have a chance of not just getting steamrolled because they have no defenses, they're going to have to ex start exporting to Xeno too. And this and that is the moment where this war just got way more crazy and people started freaking out. Because, and this is why the intense music starts playing here, because this is out of the norm and people are really scared. Zeno. They follow suit. And now this was not a small war. But a war of attrition. So now the this is a war of attrition. Lanar General Wilson made gains at Relly after a suicidal mission they took to take them. I also really like this transition. It goes from this screen and then it goes like the top X and then you move it down. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so now we have all these different designs. The Planet to Space Missile System. The Turtle Freighter. You're going to actually want to keep this one in mind. And the Snake ba Clash Battleship. It's gonna. This uh, freighter is gonna come in at part two. Started to introduce modernized designs for ships. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this skippy tiny this attack list. And I'll let you so you see the things. Unit made gains. These are gonna be characters. By the way, I feel like I'm gonna go. Up. Do I have to go to uh, you know? So originally. There was lasers coming out of this thing. This thing was having, like, really bright lasers. You can kind of see it here. But it just didn't get in exporting, and I didn't realize before the video was already up, so. It was meant to be shooting. It was gonna, it was gonna be. Anyways. So you see, they made games. But you don't see anything coming around the middle. No, none of those games. Why is that? Well, both sides had developed an opposite side. Because of Elyon. named Elyon. As per Treaty of the Twelfth O'Lanner War, the planet was to be split in two. Yeah, it makes sense why they split that planet in two, because, you know, it's right next to them. Also, Both it has a moon. Their new this is not El this is not Eliana's background, it's just a moon. The PTS missile systems on and you might be wondering, why does the ground start shaking? Why does the ground start shaking before this PTS system is landed? Well, that's because they landed all these PTS missile systems at roughly the same time. Also, you can see that time is going really fast. Here, this is a very sped up shot because you can see this moon is just, you see this moon is going up really fast. See? And I also imagine that the, you know, they probably uh, took some time before they could become fully operational, so both sides were able to land their new PTS bef uh, before uh, the, the uh, PTS landers could get shot down. Systems on the planet. The guns could easily destroy Here we see. Whoop! It's dead now. Both and these new PTDPs. Uh, we'll get into why this ship, um, this, sh by the way, also, this is like perspective kind of thing. This ship's not nearly as big as this massive battleship. Um, but, uh, this, yeah, planetary tiny drop pods. They're tiny, but the Olars were actually, I'm gonna give you a little, little, uh, I don't know, teaser. The Olars actually had. I mean, it's not much of a teaser. It spoils like one line in the video. But. So, uh, the Olars actually were able to get bigger uh, drop pods than the, the landers were. PTDPs could fly in shipments. The planet soon became a massive fortress. This was like. I did this. This this is graphic here was so rushed because I just wanted to be done with editing. That's <laughs> okay. Massive barrier yeah. both sides, preventing ships from getting even remotely close. And the demand to take it was high. Okay, there we go. To be continued. So yeah, this this video, the second part is most 
uh, this whole video was basically just me building up to the Battle of Elyon, setting up the world and everything, because the Battle of Elyon is going to be the main focus here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Crap. Well, I'm going to make sure to trim that out in the editing so that you cannot just see that. You saw nothing. Okay. So, yeah. I guess that was it. I'll see you later. Bye.